Today I'm going to update you all on the continued reopening of New York City tourism, including what's going on with quarantine. Then I'm going to answer your questions about life in the Big Apple right now. Watch till the end. We've got a lot to discuss. I have got so much to update you guys on. I just have to say, Park Slope, my neighborhood in the spring, absolutely gorgeous. I love living here more and more every single day. In my last video, I discussed how domestic quarantine is no more in New York State. Well, there was a huge announcement this past week, which I think also got buried due to all the issues that Governor Cuomo is dealing with right now. I've got the announcement right here. Asymptomatic travelers entering New York from another country, U.S. state, or territory are no longer required to test or quarantine as of April 10th, 2021. Now, before you all go rush and book your plane tickets to New York, there's more to this. For one, this is just a state law, and federal law is what is going to get you into the United States from out of the country. If you live in one of these countries, you are still not allowed to enter the United States as a tourist. However, this could change pretty soon, and later on in the video, I'm gonna tell you when you might be able to enter. Also, you still need a negative COVID test within three calendar days of your flight, and this also goes for citizens of the US. But then the question is, is it the right time to visit New York City? And I think that depends on a lot of things. If you come to New York right now, you're gonna be wearing a mask a lot. Broadway, still not open. They're looking at September, fingers crossed on that. Restaurants and bars are closing at midnight. Not everything is reopened, although most things at this point are. Is it the best time for a first trip? I'm not so sure, but I have many of you out there who tell me it's your fifth or sixth trip and you guys are already coming from spots within the United States, so it's entirely up to you. Can you imagine if this was your brownstone here and you got to wake up every day looking at what I believe are cherry blossoms right here? You know, what do you prefer, spring or fall? <laughs> Ever since moving to Park Slope, I'm starting to like spring more and more every day. Let's jump to one of your questions and Deb Bradley asks, do you miss New York the way it was before with more tourists or do you prefer it now with more locals? That's an excellent question. I always said that I miss the way New York was compared to the early days of COVID where it was just so eerily quiet. You would take the subway and no one else would be riding with you. It was kind of creepy walking at night without another soul in sight. I believe that there's going to be this sweet spot where enough things are going to be open and people are going to feel safe enough to go out. And I think we're getting very close to that sweet spot right now where I barely even notice a difference at the moment. Walking around Park Slope, my neighborhood, this isn't really a, a touristy area. Where I notice the most changes is Manhattan when I film videos there. It's not as congested, although it is beginning to pick up. A vaccine update. New York has reached a really interesting point right now where about 50% of people living here have received at least one dose of the COVID vaccine. And by the end of the month, it should be 50% who've received both doses. And what at one point was so hard to get an appointment has completely changed where there's just thousands of COVID-19 vaccine appointments sitting right now. As far as positive cases of COVID, you can see there was a spike last month, but according to Governor Cuomo, the numbers right now are as low as they were in early November. Now, there are variants here. They are apparently spreading quickly within the younger population, but there's a hope that with the amount of vaccinations being so high in New York City and New York State, that our positivity rate is gonna continue to go down. and. I hope that's true. We're going back to the mailbag. I had Mark, one of my Patreon members, ask me about the Excelsior Pass, which is New York's vaccine passport. Now, not all states in the US are even doing this. Florida has said that they're illegal. And what the Excelsior Pass is, it's, a, it's an app for your phone where if you got vaccinated in New York State, you can keep a digital record of that. Or if you got a COVID test in New York State, you can put a digital record 
of that there as well. Let's get hypothetical here. If you're going to a Knicks game, you could use the Excelsior Pass to show them at the door that you're either fully vaccinated, had a rapid test within six hours, or had a PCR test negative within 72 hours. So all this app is really doing is just saving you the hassle of bringing a piece of paper, either a negative test or proof of your vaccination. I do think that you're gonna need this sort of proof to get into other events around New York as things reopen. This could affect you even if you're traveling here, let's say November, December, you wanna see the Rockettes. You're not gonna need a vaccine passport, but I will say bring your vaccine card if you are vaccinated from overseas or be prepared to take a test in New York City. I have never seen my favorite coffee shop so packed as it is right now, wow. It's the first time I've ordered iced coffee this year. It's about 70 degrees, quite the milestone. Back to the mailbag, Ninja Tony asks, cool name, Ninja Tony, what's your favorite neighborhood in New Jersey? I don't really consider New Jersey a neighborhood kind of place. It's more like towns or cities. Uh, I like Hoboken a lot, right on the Hudson River overlooking the city. It's beautiful, there's a lot going on there. I'm also a very big supporter of the Jersey Shore. And I try to go every summer. Last summer we, we spent a couple of nights in Manasquan. That's a really pretty town. I like Point Pleasant if you're into that like traditional boardwalk experience. I also love going to Wawa. Anyone from New Jersey knows exactly what I'm talking about. Get one of their subs. Excuse me, hoagies. Yeah, I grew up in North Jersey. I don't like that term, hoagie. Back to the topic of when will people from, let's say, the UK or the EU be able to enter New York City just because there's no quarantine. Well, there was an article circulating last month that Joe Biden, our president, was planning for mid-May to lift those travel restrictions. But that is only if things continue to go to plan, if the vaccine rate continues to go up, if the COVID positivity rate goes down. So I wouldn't rush to book a flight for May or June just yet if you're in one of those countries. Keep your eyes peeled in May. It could have a huge announcement. And when that is announced, you know I'm gonna make a video about it. Stephanie Stearns wants to know, should you rent an apartment from out of state or is it better to do so in person? Shout out to Stephanie, big supporter of this YouTube channel. I would never rent an apartment in New York without looking at it first. I did an entire video about this with Cash Jordan last year. We talked about you know what to look for when you're renting. When you rent a New York City apartment, I wanna know what's above it. I wanna know what's on that street. There's so many things that you have to look for, not to mention if you see pictures from a website, they could be using a wide angle lens. It could completely not look like the photos. It's one thing to get duped into a hotel room for a couple of nights because of a wide angle lens, but do you wanna be signing a one year contract just based off of pictures? Definitely look at the apartment in person and you know, rent a hotel room or an Airbnb for a week while you look. Z Nell wants to know if I've thought about purchasing an apartment in New York City in the future. I mean, sure, I've thought about it, but even with the pandemic, the prices to own an apartment in an area that I would wanna live in, it's just exorbitant, but maybe if enough of you guys hit like on this video, YouTube will blow up my channel and I can't afford that apartment, so think about it. Aria Price wants to know, is the New York City summer smell a real thing? Where I used to live in Greenwich Village, Manhattan, absolutely, because a lot of streets, you would see the trash bags like piled like right there. Yeah, there was some really bad smells in the summer. Also in certain neighborhoods in Manhattan, the more touristy areas, the areas with a lot of commute, there's just more trash. There's more garbages that are overflowing. There was absolutely a bad summer smell. That is true, but it also depends on where you are in the city. I have not spent a summer yet in Park Slope, my current neighborhood, from what I've seen of it so far. I don't see a lot of trash on the streets. <sighs> Sherry W asks, how do you and your wife maintain a healthy weight with all the food videos you do? Do you cook at home, mostly takeout? Give us the deets. When are you gonna start offering tours? It'd be a great additional stream of income. All right, let's start with a question about how do we uh, keep the weight off? I think both of us, especially Adriana, not as much me anymore, have been blessed with really fast metabolisms. I do feel like some of the food videos are catching up with me a little bit. So when we're home, we eat super, super 
boring. Like last night for dinner, I had salmon with veggies and eating healthy at home helps me when I go out. I don't feel guilty about eating any old thing, even if it's not the best for your diet. I'll eat anything just to show you the best stuff in neighborhoods. As far as the tours are concerned, I don't really see myself giving live tours. I prefer to do it on video. I think tour guides have a really tough job. I respect it so much, but it's just not something I see myself doing. Home sweet home. The apartment has had a few changes. When your wife is an artist, you can do some really cool things in your apartment. Check out Adriana's art shop, putting a link in the description. She makes some really cool stuff. Crystal K Beauty asks, what is the biggest tourist gimmick in NYC? Shout out to Crystal, fellow creator. I think the biggest gimmick in New York City are probably the hop on, hop off bus tours. And I'm not even here to bash them. I think there's some people who are not comfortable traveling to New York City and riding public transit. They may need the hop on hop off bus tours as let's say they're training wheels to get a little bit more accustomed to the city. It's kind of like somebody holding your hand, showing you around, showing you where to go. And maybe after that, they'll be more comfortable taking the subway or doing you know more adventurous things. But I think if it's gonna take you going on a hop on hop off bus tour to actually visit New York, by all means do it. It's just not my style when I visit a different city. Tommy T Tech Reviews asks, what's the first thing you'll do when COVID is not a problem anymore? I don't know when that exact moment is going to be because COVID could turn into something like the seasonal flu. I'll say that I don't miss going to, I don't know, a crowded bar. The first thing I would like to do when COVID isn't a problem or isn't a huge problem is actually go to a Broadway show and everybody says it, I agree. Until Broadway comes back, New York City will not be the same. So when you can get my butt into a Broadway show, I'm gonna feel very good about how the city's doing and hopefully that's gonna be in September. Sean Kelly with a good question. Do most bars and restaurants allow you in wearing shorts? The types of places I normally go to will allow you to wear shorts. That's just about any neighborhood restaurant, any neighborhood bar. The only places that will require you to wear pants, maybe a collared shirt would be a place with a velvet rope, a nightclub. Depending on which place it is, possibly some of the rooftop bars in New York City or a higher end restaurant. Norma Helly asks, what are you going to do to celebrate 200,000 subscribers? Shout out to Norma, great creator in Las Vegas. And I don't know, I may just have to go to Las Vegas to celebrate 200,000 subscribers. We're at about 195,000 right now. So if you haven't subscribed yet, help me get to 200,000 so I can go to Las Vegas. All right, now it's your turn. Tell me in the comments how life is where you're watching. Uh, do you have lockdown restrictions? Are you planning on visiting New York anytime soon? I wanna know, guys. Thank you so much for watching and all your support. Till next time.